glycogenolysis, which is not in our option. So considering why fasting blood sugar level gets raised, uh, two important cycles are, first we have answered gluconeogenesis, second is glycogenolysis. So I just want to highlight on this cycle in very short, I don't want to much elaborate what exactly is gluconeogenesis is. Uh, this cycle also shows uh, glycolysis. So let me explain you what is glycolysis first before I explain you what is gluconeogenesis because these two pathways are tied in uh, three important steps. Glycolysis is the conversion of glucose to pyruvate as I have already mentioned. So as you can see, this glucose is getting converted into glucose 6-phosphate, then fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, then phosphoenol pyruvate, and finally into pyruvate. So even uh, many steps are missing in between. So my main uh, key to is you explain you how glucose is getting converted into pyruvate. This is the cycle of glycolysis. When we say gluconeogenesis, gluconeo, as in glucose is getting produced in the body by non-glucose precursors. One of those non-glucose precursor is pyruvate. So as you can see, this pyruvate is back transferred to glucose in the form of blue arrows, as you can see. Similarly, like pyruvate, Many other non-carbohydrate precursors are in the body. These are the fatty acids, the other uh, um, products like the acetyl-CoA. So many um, precursors are there, which also result in the formation of glucose. Pyruvate is the most important precursor and most common when it comes to the formation of glucose. Can we have the next slide, please? So this is the cycle where I want to explain you glycogenesis and glycogenolysis in the one flow. Glycogenesis, as the term says, is the glycogenesis as in the synthesis of glycogen from glucose glycogenolysis as in the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. So uh, in this cycle, as you can see on the left side, if you start from below, this glucose is getting converted into glucose 6-phosphate. Then there's a reversible step, whereas in glucose 1-phosphate, getting converted into UDP glucose back to the glucose. So sorry, back to the glycogen. So in, in the left side, if you start from below, this is how glucose is getting converted into glycogen. So what role insulin is playing is also shown in the same diagram. It is when we say insulin is increasing, sorry, decreasing blood glucose levels. So it is basically stimulating this glycogenesis, right? Because insulin is converting glucose into glycogen. So it is typically stimulating this enzyme glycogen synthase. So due to this stimulation, this cycle gets activated and thereby how glucose is getting converted into glycogen and this helps in low blood glucose levels. Fine. Now let us see the right part. Now we'll start from above to understand what is glycogenolysis. So this glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate, reversible step again, glucose 6-phosphate, and finally into glucose. So this is the step of uh, glycogenolysis, where is, wherein glycogen is getting converted into glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, and here, as we already know, glucagon. Uh, I hope everybody knows what is epinephrine. It is another hyperglycemic hormone like glucagon. So four hyperglycemic hormones are glucagon, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. So what exactly 
what which enzyme exactly this glucagon is stimulating is the glycogen phosphorylase so this glycogen phosphorylase it breaks the linkages between the glycogen and it separates it finally into the glucose 6 phosphate so this is the process of glycogenolysis so not complicating this slides more if i go into the brief part one cycle will take one webinar so i am just cutting it short ki when i am saying why insulin is stimulating gluconeogenesis or why uh, insulin uh, sorry insulin is stimulating glycogenolysis or uh, you can say glycolysis so we must know ki exactly which uh, enzymes are getting stimulated and these enzymes play a very vital role in the same carbohydrate pathway so this part this much part is clear when it comes to the fasting blood glucose levels now let us answer this question what is the cause of raised post meal blood sugar in this patient is it due to decreased glycogenesis decreased glycogenolysis increased glycolysis or none of the above uh, we got first option that is option b dr aisha has written option b please write your answers on the chat box option c by dr Pra prabhita Dr. Himanshi has option A and Dr. Aisha has also mentioned option A. Okay. So majority wins. Then Dr. Mani Kumar has also option A. Dr. Gautam has also mentioned A. Dr. Gaurav has also mentioned A and Dr. Suliha so has mentioned A, Rutika has mentioned A, and Dr. Ayusha has mentioned A. So maximum answers are option A. Dr. Pavan and Dr. Sumit has also mentioned option A. Okay. So once again, I can see that the concepts have been cleared so to such an extent that uh, initially the answers were on the wrong side. As I can see, the correct answer is answer A, which we have already mentioned, uh, which I've already mentioned in the first slide. It's okay who have two, three uh, doctors. I think they still have wrong answers. If they have any uh, doubts, we can clear it in the end of the session. So as we have already covered a glycolysis in the gluconeogenesis slide only, when it comes to post meal, can you tell me now which two important cycles are getting stimulated in the chat box, please? Please write it on the chat box. In a post meal state, which two important carbohydrate pathways are getting activated hormone you know glucagon i would really like to know the carbohydrate pathways from your end uh, dr himanshi has written glycolysis and glycogenesis dr gautam has mentioned glycolysis dr aisha has written glycogenolysis uh, dr irfana has written glycolysis so maximum answers are glycolysis. One doctor's answer was absolutely correct. It definitely it is glycolysis. Somebody answered glycolysis and glycogenesis. Yes, Dr. Himanshi. Uh, Dr. Ajitesh has also mentioned both. And Dr. Aisha has also mentioned glycolysis. So this much concept is clear that uh, glycolysis, I would just like to repeat in short, 
it is mainly the conversion of glucose into pyruvic acid which is shown in a stepwise pattern if you see on the left side the red arrows which is going down from the glucose to pyruvic acid it is the glycolysis on the right side the blue arrows that are going back from pyruvate to glucose right this pyruvate is considered as non carbohydrate precursor getting converted into glucose this cycle is called as the gluconeogenesis so this we have already uh, covered in the initial slides I think this is the end of today's webinar.